Okay, welcome your eights to this video. Um, in it, I'm just going to take you through a couple of examples uh, with congruence where we've got two triangles that are joined, so they're touching each other. So the first one you'll see um, that I've got on the screen right now has got the two triangles joined along a, a side, so they're touching along here. And the second example I'm going to do, you'll see that the two triangles are touching um, at an angle, so just at a vertex like we can see here at point M. So the reason I wanted to show you these is because there is something special about them that helps us to prove their congruence. So as an example, if I have a look at this one, and I'm trying to decide are these congruent triangles, I can see that I've got an angle theta over here, and I've also got an angle theta over here, which means that if these are congruent, I've got basically one angle that's the same. If I look further, you'll see up here, I've got a similar situation. I've got an angle here that is the same as this one right next to it, since they're both labeled with an alpha symbol which means, of course, that I have another angle that is the same. So if you're thinking about your, your different tests that we could use, your congruence tests, we've obviously got side, side, side. Now, we can't see three sides of the same on um, this triangle ABP or this triangle ABQ. So that one we can't use. Uh, we've also got SAS. And if we have a look here, there are no sides that are shown at all which means that, um, well, in terms of labels, I should say. So it means that we can't use this because we definitely don't have two sides. Our other tests, of course, are AAS and RHS. Uh, RHS is out because we can't tell if these are right angles. So really the only thing we've got to work with is AAS. Now, if we have a look at this, I mentioned we don't have any side lengths that are shown, but what we do have is something unique, and that is that we've got this side, AB, is actually the same side in both triangles. So AB is a particular side in ABP, triangle ABP, and it's that same side because it's a shared side or it's a joined side in this triangle, which is ABQ, which means that we actually do have this test proven, AAS. And the reason that we know that is because this side is what we call a common side. So when we go ahead and prove our congruence, what we're going to say, first of all, is that we've got an angle the same. So I'll start off by saying angle, uh, I might start with theta, uh, A, P, B. Now that is equal to this one over here, which is A, Q, B. Now, the thing is, when I match these, you'll see I've written A first and then A first, missed my angle symbol, um, and B is obviously the same point as B, so they match, which means that P and Q, P, just right up here, matches to Q. So if I was to fold this triangle across, um, obviously P and Q are that same point in those two congruent triangles. So I've done my A. My next one, my next angle is this one up here. So I might call this one PAB. And that is equal to angle QAB. And then I've got AB. This side is common to both triangles. So I don't need to write AB equals AB because obviously that's fairly obvious. But if I say that it's common, that means that it is in both triangles. Therefore, that side is the same side. It's the same length, of course. From here, I can say I've got my three, my three reasons now, A, A, and S. I've done all three of these. So now I'll say triangle. So my final congruence statement, A, P, B, is congruent. So I use my three lines to triangle a, Q, B. Now, my reason, of course, is that it's A, A, S, angle, angle, side. So as you can see, sometimes when they're joined like this, there'll be a clue um, or there'll be something within that triangle that is, in fact, the same, particularly if they're joined along a side like this one is. That means that we actually have S as part of a congruence test already. Uh, the second one that I want to show you 
uh, is a little different because it's joined here at a vertex. So here at angle uh, at vertex M. So what I notice here straight away is that I have um, a side length here that's the same as this one. And secondly, I've got this side length over here, which is the same as this one. So if we were labeling them, I might just put some dots. If we were coloring them, I mean. So this one is the dotted side and this one I'm going to put in red is the red side. Okay, so I know that there are two sides the same. So I've got SS. So in terms of our three tests, uh, our four tests, sorry, I've got SSS. Now we consider, can we use that? Well, I don't know AP or QB. So I can't use SSS. I don't have that third side. The other one that has two sides is this one. Or obviously this one's out because we just clearly don't have two angles shown. Uh, and RHS, well, we don't have a right angle in there. So this is the only one really that we could consider. Now, the reason that we can use this one is because of this scenario in here. If we have a look at these two angles where they're joined, you can see that um, that basically these two lines form a cross and that these two angles here are vertically opposite angles. And what we know about vertically opposite angles is that they are equal. So this means that I can use SAS because what you can see here is we've got two sides and an angle between and in this one, two sides and an angle between. You can see though that the, the angle has been flipped over, it's been reflected, because if you look at this one, I've got the red at the bottom and the dotted at the top, whereas this one on the left has got the red at the top and the dotted on the bottom. So you have to be really careful when you are stating our SAS. Okay, so first of all, uh, since I need to, to prove this or to show it, I start off with a side. So I'll pick maybe the red one to start off with. So the red one in this left-hand triangle is AM. And since M is that same point in both triangles, that means that this would have to be congruent or equal to BM. Because of course B, uh, M and M are the same point, so they're matching. So that means that A and B must match. The next side then, I've got PM. Oh, I might leave a gap actually so I can put the angle in the middle. PM is the same as QM since uh, P and Q, they must be matching. And finally, the angle. So this one here and this one are the same. So angle A, M and P. That has to be the same. Remember we decided A matched to B. That means that this angle A, M, P must be the same as B, M, Q. And if you have a look at the, uh, I guess the colors that we put on, um, A starts on the red line, it goes to M, and then it goes down the dotted line. B is our red line, then it goes to M, and then down the dotted line. So we're going in the same matching order, which we obviously have to do whenever we're writing these uh these equal angles, any congruent statement, in fact. Finally, I'm up to my last. I've done S and I've done A and I've done S. So I'm up to my triangle, my congruent statement. So I'll now say AMP is congruent to triangle BMQ. And of course, my reason was SAS. Now, in terms of how we knew that, remember that we decided that these were the same because they're vertically opposite. So what we'll actually do is in brackets next to this angle, we will give that as a reason. Since they weren't actually labeled as being the same, we should be saying how we know that they are the same. And now we are 
finished. So I wanted to um, obviously show you these couple of examples um, because you may not intuitively look at it and go, oh, yep, there's another angle that's the same or there's another side that's the same. But we have to be aware that sometimes when these triangles are touching, like we had here, uh, there was additional information that we could, could use to therefore prove that two triangles are congruent.